Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another Retro RPG. And the winner of the poll this week was, kind of surprisingly, the Thrykreen of Athas book for Dark Sun, the Advanced Dungeon Dragons 2nd Edition setting. And I kind of thought it was going to be Warhammer's week, but you probed me wrong, so I'm going to love covering this. And as usual, I'll be back at the end of the video with other poll-related stuff and other channel-related stuff. So I hope to see you there. So, this is the Thrykreen of Athas book for the Dark Sun setting for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition. Now, Dark Sun is a really interesting setting. Not only because of the setting itself, because it's a post-apocalyptic version of fantasy. You've got elves, dwarves, halflings, and Thrykreen and half-giants, and mulls, which are half-dwarves and half-elves, and all the usual fantasy races, plus some interesting new ones. But magic has devastated the world. There was a big wizardly war, and magic has shattered it. Most of the planet is a desert, and magic doesn't really work the way it used to. Um, there are essentially wizards which have to suck the life force around them, and are responsible for the world becoming this desert. Um, defilers. There's also preservers who get lesser magic or less powerful magic, but don't wreck the world as they cast it. Um, the world is cut off from all gods. It's cut it uh, cut off in its own crystal sphere. So no spell jammers can travel from other worlds. No dimensional travelers can come in, but the gods don't have access to it either. So there's clerical magic, but it's all more sort of nature based. Um, and the mutations have led characters being stronger. You start at third level. And you get tr attributes far higher. So I believe like half giants could get strengths up to 22. And many of the normal races could get stats of 20s. Which much higher than the 18 limits of the traditional species. But all of that's quite interesting. But what makes Dark Sun even more interesting is that it was a setting that came out after the complete books were released. So the complete books had come out and they were enhancements for the different classes. There were kits and extra abilities which buffed the classes up and species up. So all of those books enhanced the game. But there was also the complete book of Psionics which gave psychic powers, and everybody in Dark Sun has psychic powers. Um, no matter what class you've chosen, you get a random psychic power, because everybody's mutated by the background magic. But you also get Sinusis being a huge part, they're one of the key classes of the game, to replace the loss in wizardly magic and of clerical magic. So, this wasn't just the core rulebooks then the source books for the world. This was the core rule books, all of the complete books, and then the world on top of that. It's a far deeper um, setting because it's fleshed out by all these things at launch, rather than bringing out a world and it just being what's in the source book and nothing else. We've got all this stuff that's already been built up to make it beyond the standard. But anyway, let's flip over to the back of the book. Thrykreen of Athas by Tim Beach and Dory Hine. They tower above mere human warriors and adventurers. In this, a savage world they hunt, all else is prey. Wandering the sandy wastes and stormy barrens under the crimson sun, Thrykreen are the most skilled trackers, the most barbaric gladiators, and the most implacable of foes. Mysterious and savage, the Mantis people have been a closed book until now. The Thrykreen of Athas enters the world of the nomadic Thrykreen, a world governed by Topjack, the clutch mine and Tick-Jack, the hunt mind. From hatchling to hunting to coming of age, the secrets of the Thrykreen are at last revealed. From their formidable combat abilities to the subtleties of their psionic powers, this accessory explores every aspect of Thrykreen life. For players, there are new rules and new character kits offered to the Dark Sun game characters for the first time. A special adventure for Thrykreen characters, the taste of fear is included. Dire events in the unknown north trigger ancient racial memories. What terrors lie in the lost secrets of their past? And that's kind of what this book is. It's fleshing out the Thrykreen from the Dark Sun setting. 
and giving them a massive background, a history, and lots of interesting stuff going on. Um, I really don't think I'm going to do this book justice because it does provide so much. But we're going to have a quick flick through and a glance at it. Um, now, in the front cover, there is this massive poster. Now, I'm going to gesture it at the camera so you can see bits of it. But I'm probably going to just graft in a clearer photograph I've put of this poster so you can see it all in detail. Now I'll put that out of the way. I'll put it in the back and we can open up. Now it's standard TSR presentation of the time, which is very, very nice. Lovely artwork and typography and very clearly laid out. A table of contents and an introduction telling a story of a uh, cream. Um, we get introduction, learning about the thrycreen. Definitions about the thrycreen themselves, how large they are. You know, their bodies are like um, 11 foot long because while they stand just slightly taller than a human, their body is massively longer got pronunciation, so explaining how to pronounce their words, and a sample glossary of different words. So, pack mates, um, life experience, etc. Then we talk about their structure of their tribes, essentially. Clutch, pack, and nation. So it shows the structure of what a Thrycreen can live in. So they can be part of a pack but have individual clutches, so essentially litters of thrycreen from the same egg batch. And then they can join what they consider to be a pack or a clutch with members of another species, because thrycreen are very pack-related creatures. So when they're away from other thrycreen, they will tend to cluster together. They won't tend to be loners. The Great Race for Kachka, a tale told to Thrycreen Lyavey. Breaking the ties, how they leave, how leadership's decided, how the packs and nations are sorted. The hunt, because Thrycreen are hunters, um, more so than any other species. They are born to wander around catching prey. Now, it mentions how they like eating all animals but tend not to eat other intelligent animals. The exception for this appears to be elves, though. <clears throat> Thrycreen that taste elf meat become basically addicted to it, and so become killers, which isn't helped by the fact that elves know that Thrycreen eat them, so start to panic, and the pheromones they emit in panic induce hunger in Thrycreen. So even if a Thrycreen hasn't eaten an elf, if he's around one which starts panicking, he will suddenly get hungry, which will feel uncomfortable for the Thrycreen, because he won't know, if he's never tasted elf meat, what's causing this hunger in him. But once he's tasted elf, he'll want to taste it again. And it does mention how elves know this, so uh, consider Thrycreen just to be brutal killers, whereas all the other species are like, no, they're kind of handy to have around. Um, talking about after the hunt, when prey is scarce, other types of hunt, their mentality, their throwing stars. This is something else they do, which it goes into later. They create these throwing stars, which they also attach as heads to spears to defend themselves. But these tend to be manufactured out of their own venom. If they emit their venom, it crystallizes and can be shaped, and they create these blades. Um, it takes them about 10 days to create one, but it's basically by drooling and shaping it and letting it dry and crystallize, they can create weapons for themselves. Um, Thrycreen do not like to be called bugs and do not like being referred to as it. Thrycreen is a person. Um, Thrycreen and other races. So it goes through dwarves, mulls and humans. So... Thrycreen will generally accept these. You know, dwarves are hardy creatures, as are moles, and humans are very adaptable. So Thrycreen will accept these as packmates, or clutchmates. Halflings tend to live in the jungles, 
They are the cannibalistic killers of the Dark Sun world. And Thrykreen, their carapace tends to rot and damp, so they don't like jungles, so they don't have much experience with halflings. Half giants, they respect, but they travel too slow. They're giant, plodding creatures, and the fast moving packs of Thrykreen don't relate well to half giants. And it goes on about the relationship between elves. Elves consider Thrykreen their greatest enemy. They even have a profession in their tribes, the Thrykreen Slayer. Um, elves hate Thrykreen. From the elven point of view, the hatred is probably valid. Seeing one's friends eaten by a creature is likely to give one a poor impression of their entire race. To make the situation worse, Thrykreen really do enjoy the taste of elf flesh. Once they taste it, they tend to want more. Because elves fear Thrykreen as much as they hate them, and the elves fear scent is attractive to Thrykreen, this is a problem. So it creates an interesting relationship between the elves and the Thrykreen, which is kind of odd because they're both the desert hunting species. So they would work together best. Elves in Dark Sun use speed to travel across the deserts and hunt. They're not the graceful, um, mysterious species. They are a violent hunting species, much like the Thrykreen themselves. Thrykreen magic and psionics. Um, it explains that Thrykreen cannot cast wizardly magic at all. They cannot become preservers, they cannot become um, oh, what are they called? Uh, defilers. They just cannot cast magic. Even if you were to put the mind of a wizard in a Thrykreen body, the body will not be capable of casting wizardly magic. Um, they can be clerics, they can have um, the that kind of magic, but tend towards psionic powers. Around 50% of all Thrykreen have at least one wild talent. We've got the ge uh, general physiology. So instead of skeletons, they've got an exoskeleton. And it explains how this is tough, so they get a natural armor class. But as swords and things cut through it, it heals fairly fast as well. It explains how their blood works to heal up the carapace, how it heals in in different colors. So any wounds they receive are very, very visible, and they tend to wear these as badges of honor. Talking about the antenna and the eyes, how their head works, their eyesight, their mandibles and mouth. Different layouts of types of Thrykreen hands. Um, it also goes on to demonstrate how they hold their weapons later on. We go through the healing, reproduction, just explaining all the things about them. The Thrykreen stages of let, uh, growth. So they become a young adult at four years old, and they become venerably old at 25 years old. They live shorter lives. Um, we explain all of those. Got the venom and crystal explaining about that. The venom is dazzle. That's the material it's called. Uh, basic abilities, top check and racial memory. Thrykreen have racial memories, so they remember things from previous lives, um, which goes a lot into the history which is put into the species here, where the Thrykreen are the remnants of an older species which manipulated its form. Um, they were insect-based, but there are different branches now, as was shown on that larger poster and we'll come to later. Developed abilities, so leaping, their venom, how they can poison things, how they can dodge missiles. They've got disadvantages, so the wounds and chitin, um, different proficiencies they can have. Kachka, which are their throwing weapons, and how to construct them. So you can see there with the different number of fingers how they hold the weapons. Um, and different types of ones, so if they make them out of hardwood, stone, metal, or dazzle itself. <laughs> Carrying on through, we've got the different types of natural or uh, traditional weapons that they make. We can see there, like the Githka is two Kachka attached to the end of a spear. So they use the Kachka and just make spears out of them. Um, Thrykreen themselves are obviously quite formidable, so it explains how they can do basic attacks. Um, it's almost like playing an alien or a gene stealer out of the 40k universe. <clears throat> Sonically empowered items. Guiding principles. So we're going through the psychology. 
priests and shamans. The knowledge of the Great One that rests in their uh, mind. Gender relations. Male and female Thrykreen are treated exactly the same in Thrykreen society, except when a female is carrying eggs. Um, hunting and raiding. Treatment of enemies. Um, death, customs and practices. Art and sculpture, clothing and decoration. Obviously as a travelling species and one which doesn't require clothing because of their natural armour. They do tend to have different relationships. And then we go into how they live in cities along with the other races. Because although they are a tribal desert travelling species, in Dark Sun there are cities, so they do mix. Um... They don't have any written language of themselves, but they do have non-verbal communication. So they can communicate using their mandibles and other gestures between themselves privately. Talks through the hunting packs, raiding packs, special packs. And then we've got the Thrykreen nations. So we've got things like the Trin, which are more primitive Thrykreen, not much more than beasts. The Zikchil, who are... Um, the one, or related to the people who manipulated them, and um, they still have the natural abilities, and um, they retain the ability to manipulate their own enzymes and the ability to rebuild and augment the living beings. Zikchil transform Kreen into Ziktrin, and Ziktrin are more cultured Thrykreen, but also giant, uh, beweaponed monstrosity Thrykreen, because they are supposed to sort of protect. Uh, Thrykreen society. The Kreen themselves, crossbreeds, um, between north and south, because the Thrykreen of the north tend to be called Torkreen and live in larger settlements, this kind of thing. Thethalor, a Thrykreen settlement where obviously there's nests made of their own enzymes and things that they ooze, whereas the ones in the south are the desert travelling ones. Um, three Thrykreen of Other Worlds, um, going through different classes, so warriors, the Chakak, which are the Sionicists, elemental priests, um, druids, multi-class Thrykreen, different kits. It talks through the kit, uh, kit descriptions and what ones would fit. Um, there's new kits in here. So we can see the hunter, the guardian, the scout, the raider, the pack scientist, the student missionary. And then we're on to the adventure, which has them traveling out to an ancient Thrykreen settlement. And as they're exposed to this, some of the ancient memories come back where they remember Thrykreen society at its height, before the fall of Athas, before it was all wrecked, when they stood amongst the other intelligent species as cultured and builder society. Um, don't want to go too much through that. We can see when they're getting attacked by the more primitive... Um, types of Thrykreen which don't have hands. The Thrykreen themselves you can see they have their forearms walking on two legs and wielding weapons whereas the more primitive ones walk on four legs and just use their forearms as bladed weapons. Um, <clears throat> so we go through and there's various memories come out as they remember the society they face off against other Thrykreen creatures. The return of the Trin Stronghold to Doom. We've got the NPCs for the adventure. Racial memories which come out. And Jalathgak, so small flying in animals related to the Thrykreen. The Trin, which as I said are the four-legged, two-armed, um, more primitive, almost Thrykreen cavemen. The Zitrinak which are sometimes called Torkreen. They are a creature created from a normal Kreen. They look like a normal Thrykreen or Torkreen, but is larger and more dangerous. It explains how they've been mentally adjusted for combat. While they have 
some cultured um does it mention it as implied by the name which translates as near person the zitranak has lost its identity these creatures are devastating combatants but at the combat at the cost of their personality and beliefs almost like zombies in many ways much like the trin in their ferocity the zitranak are cold controlled and cunning they cannot breed they are dangerous hunters zitrin were ordinary queen before their conversion the process is believed to be irreversible and then we've got an advert for the dark sun beyond the prism pen pentad boris the dragon has fallen destroyed by the master he once betrayed what evil will raise to betray him and that is it thrykreen of athas it's absolutely packed with information really really useful if you're playing a thrykreen it really builds on the world in a fantastically interesting way taking it out and making the thrykreen core if you want to take your campaign in that direction you know their ancient culture the fact that there's these thrykreen offshoots going around mutating thrykreen and making them into warriors to try and preserve the memories and the racial memories of this ancient species meanwhile everybody on the outside just looks them looks at them as not much more than beasts they're desert raiding creatures which will eat you if they get out of control you can trust them to a degree but they are not much more than monsters to tell the truth but that fits in so well to dark sun so that was the thrykreen of athas book which won the poll this week with 30 percent now, closely behind it was the book I thought was going to win this week, which was the Warhammer Companion for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. I also thought the Inquisitor Handbook would make a stronger showing, but the Rigger's Black Book came third. So anyway, all of those stay in the poll. Obviously, Thrykreen and Athas leaves because it's had the video done on it. So instead of that, I'm putting in Traveller the New Era, one of the games I've got sitting behind the camera in my pile of games to be done. So we'll see how that does. Games Designers Workshop stuff is usually quite popular so hopefully fingers crossed um that's going to be done this week but it's completely up to you so if you want to see the whammer companion if you want to see inquisitor's book or even if you want to see luna rising which nobody really seems to want but it got an all right showing nine percent of the vote this week a few people out there want to see it but we'll see what happens on other channel related stuff we've passed the 2000 subscribers so me and Adam recorded the uh, 2000 subscribers special, which actually will have been out the Wednesday before this video is released. So hopefully you've watched that. Me and Adam trying some Scottish stuff. It was a bit of a laugh. We enjoyed ourselves. We enjoyed the food. Well, neither of us is small, especially not me. Um, so there's that. Um, the Path to, the, to a New Edition series is now up to its third episode. I hope you're liking that. Um, it's going to continue for 11 episodes as we cover the 10 releases of the D&D ne Next um, playtest packages. And then I'm going to do an 11th video on what has been talked about for 6th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Obviously, it's been announced as probably not coming out until 2024, so we've got a few years to wait until it's out. But there's various things which hint in the direction it's going to go even if we have no idea what form the rules will take. But generally, I think it's going to be fairly uh, compatible with 5th edition. But anyway, I think I've witted on for quite long enough as usual. So thank you very, very much for watching. And, as always, you look after yourselves. And I'll catch you later. Bye now.